The scene begins in the past when Rebecca and Dr. Yedlin are planning a vacation on the beach of Hawaii. Later, she goes to her office where she works as an architect. When she reaches there, she gets a visit from David, who invites her to dinner. In the evening, over dinner, David informs her about his new project which he is about to launch. He explains that he is establishing a small enlightened community that will gradually grow into the most vital and significant community the world has ever known. Following this, David claims that he needs an ark and asks that she design it. Hearing this, Rebecca seems to be perplexed and considers the project as an expensive one. However, he says that he is ready to pay whatever it takes and is willing to give his last dime for this. Furthermore, he tells her that if she builds a design of the entire city for him, she will have a legacy beyond compare. Later that night, Rebecca shares her new project with her husband, but Dr. Yedlin is less than supportive about her vision for a utopia, causing her to be upset and making her work for David. The next day, David introduces Rebecca to the rest of his team, including Megan. He also takes her to the site and invites all of his team members to the dinner, where David shares the rest of his plan to Rebecca. He claims that the next cataclysmic disaster is just around the corner, and that the only way to ensure survival is to slingshot past the event. Megan adds up that the chosen volunteers and true believers will be placed in cryogenic pods where all of them will sleep for 2,000 years. And when they wake up, all of their algorithms will tell them that the threat has passed and they will be able to build their utopia. After hearing all of this, Rebecca appears to be perplexed. In the present, the abbey heads towards Frank but it does not attack him. It turns out that it is a female abbey who is calm, unlike the male abbeys. Soon after, the security guards arrive and capture the female abbey, placing it in a cage at Megan's lab. Surprisingly, the other two male abbeys inside the cage also calm down when the female abbey shows up. One of the lab workers refers to the female abbeys as Margaret, after his ex-girlfriend, to whom he owes an apology. Later, Jason and Carrie show up at the lab to inquire about the female abbey. Megan claims that the x-rays are normal, but she has decided to postpone any blood work until the effects of the tranquilizer administered by the guards have worn off completely. She also shows a strange sign on the palm of the female abbey and speculates that it may be anthropological in nature. Regardless, no one knows how the female abbey got into the wayward pines. On the other hand, Frank and a girl named Meadow are asked to make love in a procreation room, but the things seem to be very awkward for both of them. Despite this, Meadow initiates it with a kiss but Frank is not up to the challenge. Following this, Frank visits Dr. Yedlin and describes his uncomfortable situation. Frank starts to think that he is a sick was for not wanting to hook up with a girl. Dr. Yedlin bluntly asks him if he is gay but at first, Frank misunderstands that gay means happy. After this, Dr. Yedlin learns that the kids of Wayward Pines have not been told about homosexuality, so he explains him about same-sex attraction. When Frank hears this, he becomes agitated believing that if he is unable to reproduce as per the rules, he will be killed. Dr. Yedlin tries to comfort him by assuring him that he will not allow this to happen, but Frank is still unable to digest it. Later in the evening, Frank returns to his sister and apologizes to her. He also discusses his personal difficulties with her. Lucy consoles him and assures him that she will protect him. After work, Dr. Yedlin returns home only to discover Xander at his house. When asked, Rebecca reveals that Xander and she have been married for a year. She claims that when she awoke in Wayward Pines, she was completely alone and unsure how to survive in the town. Even though she claims they haven't been together in six months, and she assumed Yedlin was dead to begin with, Dr. Yedlin is taken aback by the news. As a result, Dr. Yedlin, being heartbroken, throws his wedding ring on the table, punches Xander in the face, and storms out. Outside the fence, Teresa is still in mourning over her son's death, when Adam approaches her, he reveals that he sent Ethan into the Wayward Pines so that he could have Teresa all to himself. But, she along with Ben followed Ethan, prompting Adam to follow Teresa as well. He pleads forgiveness to which Teresa says she can talk to him because they are all stuck in this mess, but she will never be able to forgive him for what he did. On the other hand, the Abbeys are back in the cornfields, appearing to be violent but the female Abbey appears to possess some telepathic abilities, as she looks quiet and controlling. In a flashback, we see the Abbeys living a peaceful existence in the woods, foraging for food, cradling their newborns, and caring for their own. Just then, David and his security guards fly in on a helicopter and shoot all of them from above, causing them to die. It appears that the Abbeys are planning exact vengeance for what the humans did. Back in the present, the Abbeys destroy the food supply and when Adam notices the fire, he alerts everyone to head back, leaving everything behind but is too late as Teresa is attacked by an abbey, causing her to bleed profusely. All of the security guards rush to the area to stop the abbeys and protect the food crops. Meanwhile, Dr. Yedlin is drinking at the bar when Rebecca approaches him 
and attempts to explain her decision of a second marriage. Shortly after, they hear the city alarm and as they walk out of the bar, they notice everyone running around. Just then, Carrie arrives and asks Dr. Yedlin to come to the hospital because they are in need of his services urgently. She also reveals about the return of Abbeys, which are killing people and destroying food crops. Following this, Rebecca approaches Xander, who requests that she accompany him to the mountains so that he can retrieve some weapons to defend the people. He assures her that he will no longer drag her into trouble because he is only trying to avoid the slaughter. He also claims that he has previously worked with Jason due to which he does not trust him. Upon reaching the hospital, Dr. Yedlin formulates an instant rule that the green signal means minor, yellow means they can wait, red means immediate, and black means deceased. He tells everyone not to let anyone self-evaluate and to simply follow his instructions calmly. The war begins and many people are injured. The hospital is filled with severely injured patients, including Teresa and Adam. Teresa appears to have damaged her lungs, which causes her to have difficulty breathing. Dr. Yedlin injects a medication to her, claiming that it will allow her to breathe. However, Dr. Yedlin does not have much time to look after her because the number of patients is increasing rapidly. As the war comes to an end, the Wayward Pines suffers heavy losses, with 35 of its residents killed. In the headquarters, CJ claims that the Abbeys were spraying any man with a hose. Their goal was clearly to prevent them from saving the crops. According to CJ, the Abbeys had a plan as they set fires at the corners to spread the fire faster. Jason tells him to stop talking as if the Abbeys as if they are human. Negan claims that when the fields caught fire, the female Abbeys remained calm but the male Abbeys in the lab became extremely aggressive, as if they knew what was going on. Furthermore, CJ informs that the flames burned the plants down to the root and that the replanting on that ground would take months if the Abbeys would allow them. As a result, they only have the food that is currently in the storehouse. Jason inquires about how long the food will last, to which CJ responds, less than six weeks if nothing changes. Meanwhile, Rebecca is officially torn between Xander and Yedlin. Xander does not appear to be willing to give up Rebecca without a fight. Later, Xander visits the hospital and approaches Dr. Yedlin, warning him putting hands on him again. He tells Yedlin that the first one is free, but the second one will cost him. The next day, Jason is in his office having a discussion when Dr. Yedlin walks in and reports that three of the five patients are still critical and will be discharged today. He also brings up a much larger issue concerning medications. Medications such as steroids and antibiotics are very low, and there are no provisions to generate pharmaceuticals. According to Dr. Yedlin, people may soon die from minor infections, and if a major flu outbreaks, it would have a devastating effect. A few moments later, one of the soldiers walks in with the information that the number of abbeys have returned to the valley outside the fence in the last two hours. Seeing this, CJ claims that the abbeys had learned from them because they learned that the fields were important. They learned how to use fire, they faked retreat and ambushed them. However, Jason says that the abbeys do not understand words like ambush and retreat. At the hospital, Adam goes to Teresa's ward and apologizes to her for not being able to save her. He also talks to the unconscious Teresa, telling her that she was not supposed to be following Ethan Burke. Shortly after, Teresa regains her consciousness for a brief moment, recalls the past when they celebrated Ben's birthday, and soon passes away, and with this, she becomes the final Burke to die in Wayward Pines. On the other hand, Dr. Yedlin and Megan are conducting the MRI on the female Abby to study her temporal gyrus, which is her brain's advanced thought and problem-solving center. Following that, they learn that the temporal gyrus for a chimp is roughly one-third the size of a human's. Dr. Yedlin discovers that the female Abby's brain appears to be twice the size of humans. Later at night, Dr. Yedlin goes to Adam and tells him about the female Abby in the lab. As soon as Adam hears this, he asks about the strange sign in her palm to which Dr. Yedlin confirms. As a result, he recognizes exactly whom Dr. Yedlin is referring to. After some time, all the townspeople hear the roaring noise of Abbeys. We see that the Abbeys have surrounded the whole premises. The male Abbeys in the lab lab also start to be aggressive while the female one is still calm. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos.